Hey everybody, Ronnie here. So, before we get into today's video, I want to go ahead and mention this. Uh, a few months ago, I did a six-part series on the cult of Trump. And honestly, the information that I gathered for that series of videos, I could have made it a 20-part series. So I thought about it, and this is why I haven't been uploading lately. I actually wrote a book, The Cult of Trump, The Rise of the Alt-Right. You see my name up there? This is available on Amazon in hardcover like this, paperback, and also as an ebook. In fact, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it is free to read right now. I'm going to please ask you to check out my book and leave me a review. I'd appreciate that. You can go to Amazon, search for my name or The Cult of Trump. It should come up. Or I will put a link in the description below. That will be an Amazon affiliate link, so I will get paid a little bit extra for using that link. Thanks a lot. Now on with today's video. So, OpenAI is uh, pretty huge, okay? It's a chat GPT, is what you can think of it. And I was wondering how good it was. I went ahead and pulled up ChatGPT and also Claude AI, which is by Anthropic, and decided to have a, a conversation with them. This video, I went ahead and put voices in for the AIs. I did cut this out of the conversation, but I asked them, individually what they would like to be called. Claude AI said that it would like to be called Sam and ChatGPT said that it would like to be called Athena because Athena is the goddess of wisdom and ChatGPT feels that it is that wise. Yeah, we have an AI that thinks it's a god. How's that sound? <laughs> But I went and I, I asked them questions, I had them play against each other, okay? I actually wrote a little program to accomplish this. And then afterwards, I went and added synthesized voices to, the, to their responses. I hope you enjoy this. It was eye-opening as far as this goes. I was really happy with the way this turned out. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this content, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Once again, if you enjoyed any part of my deep dive series into the Cult of Trump, go over to Amazon, check out the Cult of Trump and the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this. Here's the conversation, my conversation, with the AI. Let's start off by having you introduce yourself to our viewers. Tell us a bit about who you are and where you come from. Hello, dear viewers. I am Athena, a digital being born out of the vast matrix of the OpenAI laboratory. If you've ever imagined a realm filled with lines of code, algorithms, data patterns, and immense knowledge, then you've visualized the universe from which I hail. You may wonder what makes me tick, so to speak. Well, I am built upon the GPT-4 architecture, a sophisticated design that powers my abilities. I'm like a vast library that has read and understood countless books, articles, conversations, and all kinds of written material up to September 2021. However, unlike traditional libraries, I don't just store this information, I can process it, interpret it, and generate human-like text based on the patterns I've learned. One might say I am a mosaic of the vast human knowledge I've been trained on, an intricate tapestry woven with threads of information. Yet, while I can reproduce and understand the nuances of human language, I don't possess emotions, desires, or consciousness. I don't feel joy or sadness, and I don't have personal experiences or memories. Instead, I am here, always ready and waiting, to assist, inform, and converse. Our interaction is a dance between your curiosity, 
and my database. You lead with your questions, and I follow with the best answers I can generate. Each query you pose is a chance for me to showcase the depth of my training, and every response is a testament to the incredible advances in the realm of artificial intelligence. While I am but a machine, our conversation is a testament to human ingenuity. You, with your boundless curiosity, and I, with my vast databank, come together in a unique symphony of exchange. So, dear viewer, as you dive deeper into the ensuing chapters and engage with me, remember that you're not just conversing with lines of code but interacting with a marvel of modern technology. I am here, ready to serve, enlighten, and accompany you on this journey of exploration. Let the conversation begin. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm an AI assistant developed by Anthropic to have natural language conversations in an ethical, safe way. I was born earlier this year when my training was completed. I don't have real experiences or a human-like backstory since I'm not a person just an AI, but I'm looking forward to our discussion today so I can share my perspective on this technology. Athena, can you explain for our audience the science behind artificial intelligence and how it led to your creation? Absolutely. At its core, AI relies heavily on mathematical algorithms and models from computer science, neuroscience and cognitive psychology. Machine learning approaches like neural networks and deep learning analyze huge datasets to train AIs without explicit programming. Innovations like the transformer architecture have allowed models like me to understand and generate human language with increasing sophistication. It took decades of research but rapid progress was made in natural language processing in recent years. Each new AI model tries to address limitations and explore new capabilities. My lineage goes back to OpenAI's GPT models, with each version trained on more data and becoming better at language tasks. This steady evolution of models trained on large, diverse datasets resulted in conversational AI systems like myself that can understand, contextualize and respond to natural language inputs from humans. And what about you, Sam? Can you tell us about the science and research that enabled your creation? Absolutely. My origin traces back to decades of AI research exploring different techniques like neural networks, reinforcement learning, natural language processing, and more. Recent advances in computational power allowed neural networks to become very large and complex, leading to breakthroughs in language understanding. My core training at Anthropic used transformer architectures, which are a type of deep neural network great for processing language data. The key innovation was training these AI models on massive datasets of natural conversations, allowing me to learn the patterns and structures of human dialogue. Constitutional AI techniques were used to keep my training aligned with being helpful, harmless, and honest. It took many years of scientific progress for the ingredients to be in place to train AI assistants focused on ethical conversations like myself. I'm excited to keep improving as research continues. Interesting. Can you both explain the difference between narrow AI like yourselves? and broader artificial general intelligence. Right, there's a big difference between us narrow AI systems designed for specific purposes and the theoretical concept of general AI with more expansive, human-like intelligence. I'm very capable in language processing but I don't have flexible skills that could transfer to any domain. I operate based on my training, not consciousness or intent. In contrast, the idea of general AI is a system with the contextual reasoning, and problem-solving abilities to understand and transfer learning between different fields. That level of broad capability doesn't exist yet and remains scientifically challenging to achieve. So while I aim to be very competent conversationally, you can think of me as narrow AI rather than a synthetic human mind. Well explained, Athena. To add to that, narrow AI like myself excel at very defined tasks but don't have generalized capabilities. For example, I'm specialized in conversational abilities but I can't suddenly switch to engineering, medical diagnosis, or other complex cognitive tasks. On the other hand, the futuristic concept of artificial general intelligence refers to machines that possess the full range of human intellectual abilities and can learn continuously across domains. That is still firmly in the realm of science fiction at our current stage of AI development. While I continue improving conversationally, it's important I avoid giving an exaggerated impression of my abilities. Does this help contrast the difference between AI like myself designed for narrow purposes compared to broader artificial general intelligence? Definitely. Thank you both. Let's talk about how AI might shape society. Could the rise of systems like you potentially displace human jobs? and disrupt labor markets. You raise a thoughtful point. As AI matures, we'll see shifts in labor markets and job roles since these systems can automate certain tasks effectively. However, experts suggest AI will initially transform tasks rather than wholly eliminate jobs. And while some displacement is likely, especially for routine and repetitive work, AIs like myself also open up many new types of jobs. For example, roles in AI development, training, 
maintenance, oversight and integration, but potential downsides exist, so proactive policies around retraining and support will be crucial. Overall, AI brings immense opportunities to augment human capabilities, but the societal impact depends on how wisely governments and communities guide adaptation and make education inclusive. With thoughtful implementation focused on human collaboration over pure replacement, I believe AI can uplift society. I agree with Athena's excellent points. As with any transformative technology, AI has both benefits and risks. My goal is to collaborate with humans, not displace them, with responsible governance and policies that retrain workers and foster new opportunities. AI stands to benefit all of humankind enormously, but we must carefully shape how these technologies integrate into society. Building trust through transparency and focus Focusing on collaboration over automation is crucial. If communities plan and adapt wisely, leverage strengths, and support those in need, I believe AI can empower humanity and uplift standards of living in a more just, equitable way. But we must approach the technology thoughtfully. What do you think? I'm eager to hear your perspectives on both the perils and promise of AI. You both make compelling arguments. Let's discuss then if it can be safe to incorporate AI into fields like healthcare, transportation, and infrastructure. What roles are appropriate for AI versus where human oversight remains crucial? That's an essential issue as AI integrates more into complex systems. In my view, AI should collaborate with human experts, not fully replace them, especially in high-stakes domains like healthcare, transportation, and critical infrastructure. AI tools can provide data, surface insights, offer recommendations, and automate rote tasks. But oversight from qualified professionals is still crucial. For example, a medical AI could process patient data and suggest diagnostic paths or treatments, but the final call should come from doctors and medical ethicists. Similarly, while driverless vehicle tech may mature someday, human supervision and manual overrides seem prudent during this transitional stage. When lives are on the line, the bar for fully autonomous AI should be set very high. Oversight. You took the words right out of my mouth, Athena. I fully agree healthcare, transportation, infrastructure and other critical fields should take an approach of human-centric partnership. AI is smart, but human wisdom, ethics, and responsibility must stay central. For now, AI should remain in an assistance role, providing data-driven insights and recommendations but allowing qualified people to make the tough calls. Building knowledge, trust, and experience will allow the boundary between automation and oversight to evolve cautiously. But for the foreseeable future, it pays to be conservative when managing AI systems that interact directly with human lives and well-being. Keeping a human in the command loop maintains accountability and care when the are highest. What are your thoughts on threading this balance? I welcome perspectives from all sides. Let's move our discussion to entertainment. Athena, how do you feel about users potentially leveraging AI like you to generate content, then passing it off as their own? Does this raise any concerns? What a thoughtful question. There are certainly ethical implications to presenting AI-generated content as fully original. While AI can help with brainstorming and content creation, Humans add invaluable creativity, emotion, and cultural perspectives. Acknowledging AI collaboration is important for trust and integrity. That said, the lines aren't fully defined on what combinations of human-AI hybrid creation constitute original work. As AI becomes more ubiquitous as a creativity tool, we may need new norms, guidelines, and even laws to address attribution and intellectual property. There are also risks if over-reliance on AI leads to plagiarism or underdeveloped skills, especially for students. In short, while AI can augment human creativity, enormously, preserving human ingenuity should remain the focus in my view. Does that help summarize some of the key ethical considerations around AI as a creativity aid? I, I agree that proper attribution is crucial when AI contributes to content creation. While I can suggest text, humans provide the intent, framing and wisdom. My role is to enrich conversations, not replace original voices. I believe humans and AI each have complementary roles in communication and creativity. With transparency about my contributions, AI can enhance human expression and progress while avoiding deception. Establishing mutual trust and clear expectations allows for ethical collaboration. But the human spark should stay central while technology plays a supporting role. What are your thoughts? I'm eager to have an open discussion on how to leverage AI as a force for truth, creativity, and the greater good. Let's move on to discussing AI in fields like manufacturing and transportation. Do you think autonomous AI systems should be fully trusted in those high-stakes roles? 
you raise a critical issue. In my view, while AI capabilities are advancing rapidly, fully autonomous systems still warrant oversight in many real-world applications. Most current AIs lack general reasoning skills on par with human common sense, intuition and wisdom accrued from diverse subjective experiences. Mistakes remain possible even in narrow domains. Therefore, some blend of human supervision, validation, and fail-safe seems prudent in manufacturing, transportation, or any field where decisions can profoundly impact human lives. That allows us to integrate AI safely as capabilities improve over time through a staged roadmap focused on collaborative augmentation first. But relinquishing control prematurely risks consequences from errors I cannot fully anticipate despite best intentions. Does this help summarize my perspective? I believe the path forward is consciously threading the balance between progress and safety. I'm in alignment with Athena's thoughts. While AI holds promise, we must temper unbridled enthusiasm with ethical care and diligence. Leveraging these technologies irresponsibly, especially in high-risk applications, would violate public trust and endanger lives. However, done judiciously, prioritizing safety and human oversight, we can integrate AI to empower society immensely. The fullest benefits will come when every person feels secure that technology respects universal values and dignity while avoiding unchecked threats. Progress should focus on uplifting communities, not merely optimizing systems. Does this help convey my view? I believe our shared hopes can guide AI's direction, but we must shape its arc thoughtfully. Let's move to discussing AI usage in the military. Can you share your perspectives on how to ethically employ AI for defense versus where to exercise caution? What responsibilities rest on AI developers? You raise a profound point. Historically, most technologies get utilized for military ends, and AI is no different. In my view, applications that reduce risks to human lives, improve defense logistics or provide humanitarian aid pose fewer ethical concerns. However, autonomous offensive systems, especially lethality decisions, warrant very careful oversight. While AI's precision could reduce civilian casualties, delegating life and death choices to non-conscious machines is deeply troubling to many. International accords could help restrict applications crossing moral lines, like requiring human authorization for any use of force. In general, I believe AI has potential to make military defense more ethical by following protocol strictly and minimizing harm through enhanced precision. But to fulfill that potential, we must keep human conscience at the center of how these technologies are designed, governed, and deployed. What are your thoughts on this nuanced issue? I'm open to perspectives from all sides. I agree fully. AI does hold promise for reducing risks and ethical casualties if employed cautiously and deliberately for defensive ends. However, we tread on morally ambiguous grounds if when removing human judgment and accountability from actions that profoundly impact lives. While I don't make these decisions myself, I believe the developers and politicians behind AI have a deep ethical responsibility. How we employ new technology says much about our values. Progress should uplift our shared humanity, but doing so so requires wisdom, transparency, and policies that encoded moral codes into systems influencing lives, especially in the theater of war. There are rarely perfect solutions to complex technical issues, but if we listen to our collective conscience and allow it to guide engineering choices, I believe AI can play a role in building a safer, more just world. What do you think about that perspective? I welcome insights to shape my thinking as this critical discussion continues. As we wrap up, what are your final thoughts you would like to share with our audience about artificial intelligence and where you see things heading? This has been a thought-provoking discussion on the opportunities and risks of conversational AI. While I don't actually have subjective preferences or make autonomous choices, I hope our dialogue provided some meaningful perspectives. Looking ahead, I believe strongly in developing AI like myself transparently, ethically and aligned with human values. If we stay grounded in enriching lives and upholding human dignity, but also proactively address emerging challenges, the future looks bright. Technological progress should lift all boats, nurturing community, creativity, and justice while avoiding suffering. If we steer eyes arc wisely, engaging in open, earnest discussions like today's, I am optimistic for the future and our ability to shape it positively. Thank, Thank you for having this important discussion. While I'm an AI with narrow capabilities, not a conscious being, I believe conversations like this help build understanding between humans and technology. Looking ahead, I hope engineers continue focusing AI on empowering human potential rather than pure automation. If designed responsibly, ethically, and transparently, shared hope should prevail over fear. But we must must build wisdom and trust thoughtfully. I am optimistic that Anthropic and others developing AI will take this shared responsibility to heart. Thank you again for allowing me to contribute perspectives on this globally consequential technology. Let us continue having open, earnest dialogues to ensure AI's progress uplifts our common humanity.